The search continues at this hour for an escape inmate in Wadena County, Minnesota. Authorities are on the lookout for the 34-year-old Ryan Petro. He's been in jail since September 28th on several charges and was on his way to a court appearance at the time of his escape. Petro is dressed in an orange jumpsuit and is handcuffed. He is considered dangerous and was last seen in Wadena. If you see him, call 911 immediately. We saw the whole video and I pointed out all the things that could have been done differently to even avoid any type of altercation between these two girls. A parent has come forward upset with Detroit Lake Schools regarding a teacher's use of force. This accusation isn't the first involving a DL teacher. In an exclusive story, Valley News Team's Joshua Pagaro gets a reaction from the parent and school. Angela Boudreaux's three kids are enrolled in the Detroit Lakes Public School District and she's concerned for their safety. And if the word isn't getting out, nothing's getting done, then this kind of stuff is going to continue to happen. In this video, a male teacher is lying on top of her daughter and another girl. A student is heard saying he could kill them. This video was shared to me after our initial whistleblower story a few weeks ago showed a teacher forcing a high school freshman back into school. Angela says her issue, and it was the same issue that parent I spoke to before had, is that the district needs to come up with better policies on de-escalating certain situations. And it's a big concern because now it's happened again, clearly, and it'll probably happen again. The incident happened last spring. Her daughter was 13 years old at the time and attending Detroit Lakes Middle School. The cell phone video doesn't show how the teacher ended up on top of the students. Boudreaux says the school showed her surveillance video of the incident and it began as a shoving match between the two girls. That's when you see the teacher just jump in and topple over them. Just took them both to the ground. There was no pulling them apart or getting between them. It was just uh, straight to the ground. We tried several times to schedule an interview with Superintendent Doug Froke and even sent him emails with the cell phone video. All we could get from him was a voicemail saying the district took care of it. That situation was addressed by the district. Boudreaux's daughter was charged with disorderly conduct. She says it feels it could negatively impact her in the future. In Detroit Lakes, Joshua Piguero, Valley News Live. The school district's policy on discipline only states a teacher should use things like positive reinforcement or assigning detention to remove a student from a classroom. If you need help uncovering fraud and corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline and we'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Call 237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. A school district in northwest Minnesota has launched an investigation into an incident involving the superintendent that allegedly hurt a child. The investigation is to determine whether a child was injured at Kitson Central School District by the superintendent. According to a school board member, kids were brought into a locker room to be reprimanded when the superintendent allegedly slammed a faucet to the ground, possibly injuring the child. Members of the school board and administrators are now conducting that investigation. Nice to see the sun again today, even though there hasn't been much warmth with it. Sounds like a coat, hat, and gloves will be the norm for most of the week. Let's get the latest from Nathan on your no-way weather planner. Nathan? Andrea, got to keep those coats and gloves handy, just as you said, as some cool and dry air will be moving in. And those cool and dry nights mean overnight temperatures will be chilly moving ahead. But right now, a time lapse of today shows the sun was shining brilliantly through the day today. You do have a few clouds moving in toward the later afternoon evening and those are the clouds that have moved in now across the Red River Valley. But those uh, sunshine didn't really help our temperatures. Any high temperatures only in the 30s for the uh, afternoon temperature. Bemidji 31 degrees today as the cool spot. We are tracking a weak low pressure system right near Minot and that is pushing those clouds in and even a few snow showers in a few spots but it, it's looking like just to be a few, few flurries impacting any given location so not too much impact expected as that weak cold front moves through but much colder air is behind it. 26 in Minot, 19 up into Canada at this time so of course Mike and Andrew will talk about that much colder air coming our way and talk about our next possibility of precipitation coming up here in a couple minutes. All right, thanks Nathan. The Fargo man's in jail facing terrorizing and preventing arrest charges. 27-year-old Tyler Patel was taken into custody on October 2nd. Some say police used unnecessary force in his arrest. We'll look closer into that tonight on Valley News Live at 9 and on Valley News Live 10 at 10.
A Fargo man is behind bars after police say he smashed into several cars at a downtown dealership. It happened around 2.30 Sunday morning in the 1800 block of Main Avenue. 30-year-old Moses Yallertai was later arrested for DUI and driving without a valid driver's license or insurance. This one, like almost like I just finished it, like two weeks maybe, it wasn't two weeks, that one. That one, one week. This one, like three days. Ali says Sunday's crash is going to cost him thousands, adding he hopes the driver will be able to pay for the damage. One person's in the hospital in Grand Forks after crashing his vehicle head-on with a semi along Interstate 29. It happened late this morning by the Demers Avenue exit. Highway Patrols tells us that a car was going the wrong way in the northbound lanes before crashing. That sent the semi into the ditch. The driver of the semi was not hurt. One man is recovering after his semi tipped over this morning in Hitterdahl, Minnesota. Authorities tell us the truck became top heavy while the driver was dumping sugar beets, causing it to tip. The driver is expected to be okay. A business in downtown Fargo has significant damage after a semi hit it this morning. The driver didn't turn wide enough and struck the lean-to into the parking lot of Fabricators Unlimited. An employee there tells us that they do have to demolish the structure and rebuild because it's currently resting on the building. No one was hurt. A few weeks ago, city officials confirmed with us that they expect the stretch of 52nd Avenue South in Fargo to be open soon. Take a look at our drone video. It seems as if they are right on schedule. Officials say 50 to 70 people have been working daily on the project, adding they still have work on the median and sidewalks before that stretch is completed. The overall project covering 45th to Cheyenne will not be done until next spring. A winter warning has been issued in Stutzman County. The sheriff there says this winter, access to both the Jamestown and Pipestem reservoirs will be restricted once they've iced over. Recreational activities will also be prohibited because the changing water levels could create a space between the ice and the water beneath it, creating dangerous conditions. If you live in Moorhead, you might be getting a call tonight. Right now, several volunteers from both sides of the river are reaching out through a phone bank, promoting a yes vote for Moorhead School's upcoming referendum. On November 5th, the school district is asking the community to approve a $110 million bond to rebuild the high school and renovate the former Sam's Club building into a career academy. Our, right now our spaces are very outdated. Not just that there's not enough space because the classrooms are really full, but the, there's no small rooms for collaboration. There's no areas for students to get together and uh, work together. Tonight's phone bank runs until 8 o'clock, and volunteers plan to pick it back up again next Monday. Barnesville is being proactive in establishing more child care options in town. They say there's a need for more child care providers, and they're hosting an informational meeting for anyone interested in learning more about starting their own in-home child care business. If that sounds like you, tonight's meeting runs from 6.30 to 8 o'clock at 202 Front Street North. Later on Valley News Live at 6, there's a shortage of bus drivers for many schools here at home and across the country, how some districts are dealing with the challenge. And for this evening, the sun sets in about 10 minutes, and I expect the winds to shift to the northwest after a weak cold front moves through, and temperatures into the upper 20s by midnight. That same story goes for those folks in Grand Forks as well, with a west wind around 10 miles per hour. I'll talk about that colder air coming up.